times um, with what they do. And one of the things they wanted to do is do something for Arbor Day next year. Um, but you know, we weren't sure we could invite a bunch of people to come plant trees. So someone mentioned, well, what if we did tree sponsorship? And I had mentioned that you guys do the bench program and maybe they'd be interested in something like that. So they asked me to um, reach out to you guys to see since the trees we're talking about would be planted at town parks, if that's something or just what you guys thought about that or if you might like to work together to develop some sort of a tree sponsorship program. And what we were talking about to me sounded pretty much just like the benches, but with trees. So. You know, there would be trees that we already would have picked out to be planted at the parks in, you know, specified areas where we either needed to replace one or we wanted to add them. Um, and, you know, there might be various species and then maybe some sort of a plaque um, mounted. I know sometimes they do those like plaques on the ground in a stone or a piece of concrete um, when you're doing it for a tree and, you know, maybe identify what kind of tree it is. Um, and who it's in honor of and uh, something like that. And I guess their feet, they were looking for feedback from you guys for what you guys thought about that. Could it be some sort of a joint program with the benches or would it be separate? Um, and um, yeah. it seems like it would be a good idea to be joint because you know it, the opportunity to sell both exists probably on the same form. They're, they're a little bit different. Yeah. Um, some of the costs, like if you're going to put a plaque on a stone, you're, you're looking at a lot of money. So okay. you probably have to figure out something a little bit different, but I think we could figure that out. Do you, does the tree committee um, have a, an idea of where they want to plant them? Um, well, we got to work with, you know, the parks department and figure out, um, what the plan is for if there's any replacements that need to be done over the next few years, um, or additional trees and then figure that out and then go from there. And they were thinking it might, the trees themselves, you know, wouldn't be too much probably. Um, but yeah, the, any kind of plaque or something, I don't the know if we want to hang anything, but. The best yeah. way to do a plaque is actually, um, you know, I've done a couple donations like this at Sonnenberg. They just do a ground uh, mounted plaque. You can get like a, a spike that you can put into the mulch next to the tree with a with an indication on it of who the sponsor is. And that would definitely be a more affordable way to do it, I think. Um, and then you don't have to worry about, you know, growth or what have you, you know, it can obviously be moved a little bit with it. So. Um, but that's what I have at Sonnenberg for my parents. So species would be nice as well, though, you know, on, on there as well to identify the tree. It'd be, it'd be yeah, nice. They, species, yeah. That, they really that wanted nice. to do that since that's what they're about. Right, right, sure. The other thing they do is they do the little, um, you'll see sometimes I know uh, Highland Park has those rings that go around the tree and will indicate a species or you know and uh and they could put some other information on it as well if they wanted to but i don't think that would be as affordable as a spike in the ground in the mulch under the tree i think it's something sarah definitely that we can roll right into i, I think it fits in perfect with the benches and maybe it becomes a you know like sam you i think you worked up the form for the benches i mean is it something we could just set, kind of send one ad out together that highlights them both and then yeah. it's kind of a checkbox a or checkbox b for whichever one you're looking to do and then and then we're just I sending kind of one reminder out you know every couple of newsletters or something instead of you know coming at different angles and everything um, i think it'd be easy enough to put it together so it's one form either a bench right. or a tree sarah do they um does the tree committee have like a i guess a chair or somebody who might attend a parks and rec meeting or maybe could touch base with mark um, yeah, Dennis is actually the chair, so he could oh, probably come. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, just to kind of come up with a maybe when they have a plan to bring it to the Parks and Rec Committee, and then you know we could get it out on the same form and get it out there. So. You okay. think would be around the same price? Would, would, is that what I, you try to do? I think probably cost-wise, it'd probably be comparable. Yeah, I think they thought it might actually be a little bit cheaper, but you know, we haven't looked at into any of the plaque options, but Adeline, you know, what you mentioned, you know, we can, I can probably spend some time trying to look and see what different ways we could do it. 
obviously we don't want to hang it on the tree because that just seems like something you'd constantly have to be checking but exactly um, you know what look, looking would, at that group that you have with the tree board i mean th those guys have been around you know you, you've got some pretty serious professionals there I, yeah. I think they've probably seen all sorts of different ways to do this and and that, that's a pretty impressive group so yeah i would I also see. ask i would ask yeah. sonnenberg they do this constantly so and okay. they have plaques on all their trees so so you i'm sure they would have a real quick answer for you on where they get them you know pricing and what works best in their experience if you look it up quick it's about 60 bucks okay that cast aluminum plaque is 59.99 Okay. But yeah, Sarah, if you want to just touch base with the tree board and, and kind of pick their brains and get their ideas of what they're thinking, I, I think we meld the two together and I think we're good to go. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Yeah. It might be a little bit before we figure out exactly where, you know, just working with the parks right. department and everything. It could be by, you know, spring before we have a list. But um, yeah. Okay. Good. They'll be glad. Thank you. The other thing is that um, our town planner, Eric Cooper, and the, um, the comp plan team and the CIC have been working on the comp plan, as you know, and there is a goal pertaining to parks and recreation. And so what we're trying to do is go to all the individual committees um, and ask for feedback on your specific goals. And I know Mark, I don't know if you saw it, but I emailed a link to you yesterday with some stuff. If you guys haven't had a chance to look at it yet, you know, I can come back. Or if you wanted to kind of look at it now, it's up to you. But what we're asking is just for you guys to kind of take a look at um, that section, the goal. Um, and it has measurables and then some recommended action items. And all the action items, as you read them, keep in mind, they came out of the meetings that the comp plan project team had with residents over like a year ago. Um, and they just have action steps that they feel would accomplish that goal. And so what we want from you guys is, you know, are they realistic? Would you suggest others that aren't on there? Do they make sense? Are they in keeping with, you know, what the parks committee does and what our um, goals are for our parks. Um, you know, as you might imagine, a lot of it mentions some of the um, the stuff that's in the parks pl master plan already, but that's kind of what we're looking for. It's just some pretty hard feedback on that section specifically. And, and I think the only, the only page that I had, I think I just sent out, did everyone get a, anyone get a chance to look at that? I think I just had the goal with the measurables. I don't think I had the next two pages that had all the action steps. So I'm wondering if that's something that we kind of, and I look through the action steps there and, and I don't know, maybe I'll sit down and just to try to get a better idea from you maybe before we we dump it on everybody. Um, it seemed, I, I guess I had some questions not really understanding what they were saying in a couple of them and maybe a couple that could be put together. So I, I wonder if we yeah. touch base on that. But I, and again, I didn't send this out till last night. So I'm not sure really how many people had a chance to to jump into it and digest it very much so yeah i know and i didn't even send it to you till yesterday so that's what i was saying we you know if you want to if you want me to come back or see if um well eric may not be with us by the time you meet next but i can come back um at the next meeting too if you want to yeah I, I think however if, you guys want to do it yeah if we get that and, and then maybe i could touch base here you know later in the week or next week about some of the questions I had on the, the action steps, just so that we're not, you know, fumbling through those right now and, and you know, maybe have a better direction on some of those things. So, sure. And, and those are, I did send the link for the entire plan. I don't know if anyone else opened that, the, the whole file up. Um, but it, it, if, if you are look, looking at it and I'll send out another reminder, it's page um, 110 through page 112. So it's, it's kind of deep down into the plan, so. Yeah, and I will just point out, um, you know, we really want you guys to focus on your section, but um, if any of you are willing to read through the plan in its entirety, we are 
very happy to have you do that and provide <laughs> feedback. Because if you guys remember this, um, this comp plan is being done entirely in-house by staff and volunteers. So the more eyes we get on the entire plan, the better product we're going to have. And it's going to stick with us for the next five to 10 years. So, um, so yeah, any, any feedback you guys can give is, is good. So why don't we plan on, again, we'll all take a look at it and, and maybe have some emails back and forth about questions and ideas and, and then firm everything up with you at our, our meeting in January. Okay. Does that work for everybody else? Sure. Sounds good. Okay. While you still have me, did anyone have any questions on it that I could get an answer for before we meet? Next time? Besides what you're gonna ask, Mark? Yeah, the, the biggest thing really that jumped out at me is, is a lot of the questions about connections with some of the youth sports programs and teams and, and just maybe try to flesh that out and see really what direction they're looking to head with that. So, there seem okay. to be a, two or three different things that kind of all blended together there, so. Okay. Do anything else for Sarah? I think that was all I had to share with you guys. I mean, we're going to put Doug and, and Sam on the spot now for a long list of uh, things in the works out there. Yeah, I'll let Doug take that one. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> well, you were You're quick welcome. to do that, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All right. Well, if you guys it. don't need me anymore, um, I'm going to sign off and go eat dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Good to Thanks, see you. Sarah, bye. You're welcome. Yes, bye, guys. I'll see you again in January. Bye, Sarah. So Doug. <laughs> Hi, Mark. What do you want to talk about, Mark? We can talk for days about Parks and Rec, so. I, I'm just oh, gonna, my goodness. everything you say, I'm gonna check it off the list that, that we generated the other day so that I don't have to talk about it. So just start talking. Oh my goodness. I don't, I don't even know where to begin, to be honest with you. There, it, this is such a cool time in um, kind of like, our, our history for the town of Canandaigua and what's going on with Parks and Rec. And I was actually just pulling up some stuff I was going to try to share with you. But I mean, just everything and anything, there are so many cool things going on. If you've been over um, near the Civic Center, uh, just within the last 24 hours, uh, work on the Auburn Trail has started. So you can see uh, that the work over there has uh, just begun uh, over with the connection point from Outhouse Park uh, winding around the ponds, uh, working up towards the border with the city of Canada. And I think I may have mentioned to you guys in the past, um, you know, originally one of our first meetings, and I know Dave, you and I had talked about it too. Uh, one of our first meetings, we had talked about where it was going to cross County Road 30. I'm going to make a very long story short. And after a lot of engineering and a lot of red tape, we have to actually cross at the city border. Uh, we actually, the county doesn't want us crossing back at the stop sign. The county doesn't want us crossing a county road with a higher speed limit. Um, so we've actually had to put the trail connection, believe it or not, right at the city of border where the speed limit is uh, 30 miles an hour so that we can get the work permit from the city of Canandaigua rather than Ontario County. Um, so, uh, but that's, in the grand scheme of things, honestly, I don't know that it really even matters. It's, it's a matter of it adds a little bit extra to the trail and it kind of goes wraps around. So just a few little quirks that we had to work through with that. Uh, but that's, uh, that's, that's starting. Um, where else should we go? While we're right there, the inclusive playground. Uh, a lot of stuff going on with the inclusive playground. Uh, the, inclusive, the inclusive playground has just you know, it went from originally this concept of, hey, this would be neat and this would be cool to getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And um, the University of Buffalo is involved now, their Center for Inclusive Design Environmental Access. And um, the uh, Think Big um, 
is the group Inclusion in Motion, and they've hired also uh, their own engineers for the above ground, or I'm sorry, the, uh, yeah, the above ground work. And uh, this is going to be the very first certified inclusive design playground in the United States. Oh, that's awesome. Numero uno, yeah. Okay. I mean, it's it's incredible what this has become. I, Sam, do you by any chance have? Um, can you let me share my screen? And can you also do you can you pull up that that um, building facade? I was trying to find that real quick. I don't yeah. know if you have that. Um, yeah, you can everybody share that out. Right. Yeah, everybody should have a copy. Well, Mark sent that out. Yeah, yeah, it should be there. Yeah. So yeah, we've I had see. to go through a variety of different designs of the layout of what the playground's going to look at look like. Um, but I'll share this with you. This is the most recent version, and um, you know it, it's really it, it's come a long way. And there's a variety of different things. When we had the University of Buffalo, uh, the the folks from Inclusive Design getting involved, and as they started looking at different things, one of the big things was. Uh, they felt like there, need, there really had to be a bus loop turnaround so that a bus could come in, uh, carefully you know, allow students or, or children to unload at the facility and then uh, you know, turn around and either exit the property or even uh, come back and park on the property. And actually what we're, what we're actually showing is exiting uh, this parcel and then parking across the street, either at some of the current parking lots at Outhouse Park, or obviously keep in mind the area of the northern portion of Outhouse Park is wide open with nothing there right now. That would also be a good spot where we could probably park buses. Um, University of Buffalo folks uh, have indicated to us that they have every reason to believe that we should expect people uh, using this facility in this uh, park uh, from all over upstate New York, uh, whether they're coming from Buffalo, Syracuse, Albany, and possibly even further than that. Uh, they said they would not be surprised if we see people from Ohio and Pennsylvania. Uh, so it's 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 really, it's kind of grown into uh, just gotten larger and larger. The playground itself obviously is, is still pretty much the same envelope as what it was, all of the same equipment. They've raised um, three quarters of the money that they need to go ahead and construct it. They've done a fantastic job with that. They've got a lot of sponsors uh, for some of the stuff. They've uh, just hired an engineer to help with some of the aspects relative to the building. Uh, the building envelope here is uh, right here. Uh, the building is, uh, they'll, they'll actually be taking care of from the foundation up and then they'll be doing everything above ground. We're responsible for everything basically below ground is the way I would say that. And um, this side over here of the building, and I think I might have another schematic that shows this, but uh, this side of the building over here, this is where the uh, the restrooms and, and those types of uh, things will be. Do I have a flow? Oh, yeah, here we go. Um, this is where the, uh, there'll be four family restrooms. They originally had looked at a variety of things, men, women, restrooms. Uh, the, and how to make that work and, and everything. And actually uh, their engineer and the folks at the University of Buffalo came back and said, you know, really the best thing here is to do family restrooms uh, so that it's accessible for everyone, uh, not knowing the uh, needs that people may have. And so they've, they've opted to kind of go this route. Uh, mechanical room, obviously we wanted to make sure there was plenty of room in the mechanical room for all the things that had to be housed there. Uh, this is a concession area. Uh, the, and then a storage area here. The concession area would be set up so that uh, with a window here, you could do things. This isn't a full-blown uh, kitchen or anything at all like that. Uh, this is set up more for like prepackaged things, whether it's, you know, like what you would have, I would assume at one of the sporting events where you could sell, um, <clears throat> you know, a slice of pizza that's pre-made or from somewhere else or pre-packaged uh, candy bars or whatever the case. So uh, with an outdoor seating area here uh, with an overhang here. Um, this would be the main entrance uh, coming in off of the drop point from the bus area. Uh, they have, uh, as part of their fundraising, they have what's called a donor board. I don't know if you've seen some of the pictures of some of the tiles and things that they've done there. Uh, that's kind of where that would go. Uh, and then they're talking about like a, they really envision a grand entrance coming into uh, this uh, covered area. Uh, you've got the entrance court here and then a gathering area. And then the building itself 
I has um, got some interesting, the roof line is not a typical straight line roof line. The reason for that is to uh, maximize the sun exposure and uh, they plan to, uh, as part of their portion of constructing this building and donating it to us, uh, to install solar panels on the roof to completely power uh, this facility. Uh, so uh, that's, that's their plan there. We're also working uh, kind of as a side note right now, uh, going back over here to the uh, overall, one of the things that had to be taken into account was uh, plenty of um, handicap accessible ADA parking. Uh, we're also looking at a solar charging station here on the site uh, for this, and we believe we have um, things pretty well set up um, in, in the route that we're going to pursue for, for that. The uh, main parking area, this is uh, 17 parking places, 18 parking places, 18 and 13. So that was one of the things that they were very concerned about was making sure that there was plenty of parking for the playground. Uh, we are showing what we call, refer to uh, in our site design criteria as uh, land bank parking, but the opportunity for future parking there. And then also the continuation of a future road that could be constructed, not at this point in time, and then additional parking down here. When it came to the stormwater, a big component of the stormwater was um, making sure that there wasn't, that there were not large open water areas. That was really a concern of the group from the very beginning. So this has actually been designed uh, for our uh, work. The, the town has also contributed uh, $40,000 to the engineering of this and um, <clears throat> with uh, hired MRB to do the site design for all of the rest of it and the stormwater. And so that's all been carefully uh, engineered and everything. And this is just, uh, this isn't all the detail obviously, but this is just to give you an idea uh, what's going on. But, but basically the long and the short of it is there wasn't enough room to get two, two ball fields in, uh, just not enough room to get two ball fields in when you do that. And, and really they were, they tried a couple of different versions in squeezing two fields in, and it really detracted from the focus being the playground and having sufficient parking for the playground. So we took a step back and went back to, okay, let's do one nice ball field that'll fit here and let's give the playground the attention that it deserves. Uh, so um, there's a few things left to uh, just kind of iron out from an engineering perspective. The big thing that we had been waiting on that we just finally received uh, last week was the footprint of the building and where that's going. Now that we have the footprint of the building, MRB is able to finish up uh, their engineering work and uh, we're really hoping to be able to break ground very soon on that. Uh, Sarah is trying to coordinate and Sam are trying to coordinate with uh, the group a virtual groundbreaking ceremony. Uh, they would like to have one or two people on site, but obviously we'll be in touch with you about that. We'll do some sort of a Zoom party and uh, do something. And, you know, I think it'll be kind of cool because people will be able to come from all over. There's a lot of interest in this and they'll be able to participate in it in their living rooms or in their homes. So uh, a lot going on on this little map, more than uh, what I would possibly want to take the time to to uh, go through with you, but uh, I'm happy to try to answer any questions. There's a lot of moving pieces here on this. Oh, do, do, do we have a feel for what the longevity of the different um, playground pieces are? Because yeah, there's, yeah, so we've gone through that with the with uh, Park Attack, the company, and there's actually a lifetime warranty on all the pieces uh, okay. and all of the, um, the components and everything. And then there's a 20 year or 25 year warranty, I believe it is on the finish coatings and those types of things. You no, know, what, what um, I but, mean is that, 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 that people, people's minds change and what they think that, that kids should use. So, mm -hmm. I, I mean, we can't expect that 20 years from now that, that those same um, play pieces that kids are gonna use will still even be in use, even doesn't matter how long they last. They're just, they're just going to be outdated and, and no one will come to use them. Dude. Well, I, I hear what you're saying. They've got a very impressive team that is working with them and um, they would be better um, situated to answer that question. They have a group of doctors and specialists that are working with them on this project and uh, specifically people that are uh, certified in um, 
and I know in autism, so they've gotten into all kinds of details, even about the colors and the sensories. I mean, they've really spent a ton of time on those types of things. I know that um, these are, I think, the, uh, the zip line type things, but I believe it's this piece right here, if I'm not mistaken, is like the back, uh, the back slide piece that was designed specifically for uh, this playground. And um, that piece of equipment was something that actually one of the doctors on the team came up with for children with back injuries. And they kind of said, hey, here's what it would be uh, for somebody to be able to enjoy this. And it's got rollers on it. And um, so, you know, I, I guess I get a couple of things. So I think that they've really done their due diligence. They've been working on this for, uh, you know, even long before they chose our site, I would say about four years. In, in pulling all this off and pulling this together. The other thing is the not-for-profit organization that was formed for this, Think Big, Inclusion in Motion, um, they have every intention of this being the first playground that they do. And they would like to put one of these playgrounds strategically in locations all over upstate New York and for that matter, around the United States. And they have had some other municipalities reach out to them. I believe he told me there was one in Florida that had reached out to them about doing something like this. So, you know, if it really, you know, their their goal is for their not-for-profit organization to stay viable and continue even after this first playground. And I know that what they want to do is consider this their showpiece. And, and so I would think that in the future, if there's pieces that need to be replaced, they'll certainly work with us on that. And by the way, they also are providing an endowment to the town um, for the ongoing maintenance and, and different improvements and stuff in the future for this. I guess, I guess one of my, when I look at this, one of my concerns is that we have a gigantic parking lot where we could have an, an athletic field. So, I mean, I, I get some amount of parking. How many cars can park in that parking area? So there's, here, I'll just go back up here. So there's 17 and 18, 18. that's 35, another 18, Plus so that would be what, 53. Handicapped. Well, no, there's not 13 handicapped, there's 13 in total. Oh. Um, so, you know, you're talking about 60 approximately, uh, what, 65 parking places? Yeah, I mean, what I, what I think, this is my opinion, that that why does the parking lot have, I mean, I get the handicap spots there. I, I don't totally understand that. Um, uh, why, why would we take up prime real estate with a parking lot when we could put in another athletic field? Well, where would you put all the stormwater and the water quality improvement stuff. See, that's in the middle here. And everything has been designed so that the buses could come in and turn around. So this is all green space here. So if this wasn't used for parking, there could be something else here, obviously in the trail. But the, the stormwater, keeping in mind the contours of the piece of property, everything has been calculated and factored into that. So uh, keeping the water uh, channeling off of the ball field and off of the playground uh, diverting it so that the stormwater is coming off of the parking lot into the bioretention area. And then, of course, there's another bioretention here, here, and then one out here to be able to accommodate all the requirements. So bioretention is not open water, correct? No, no, it's right. not. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so that's subterranean? So it could be subterranean. It could be like, for instance, rocks um, or a bioretention area. It could be a rain garden. You know, they're still working on the particulars of those types, particular types of things. Doug, what size is the field for? What, what, what ages is that designed for? So it's, uh, what do you got? 360 feet long, so, and 220 feet wide. What they told me is that's a regulation field. Yeah. Yeah. Adult regulation then? Yeah, sure. Or high school? Yeah. It's a, it's a full sized athletic field. Yes. And is that what we had heard that is needed? Um, not smaller size fields or what? What You, you can always make a big field to, into two, but you can't make two little fields into one big, big you, yeah. if you follow what I'm saying. Yeah. And then keep in mind, not that, you know, we'd be able to do it right now because we have a lease with the landowner. The other thing that we have the ability to do, if I can, that's not gonna really let me show you. The town owns additional land back here. 
So we could in the future, if we needed another field, we could add more field back this way. So how far is um, Buffalo Street Extension from that road that's going around there, the eight foot wide stone dust trail? So from um, that stone dust trail, how far to Buffalo Street Extension? A long way. Oh, okay, so there's, there's, yeah. there's room for future fields and that, that was my concern. Yeah, yeah, long, long way. The, so this is the property line right here See the property line? So this is all open farm field here, but this is the property line. This is the piece that the town of Canandaigua owns. And then there's a huge piece of property back behind this that continues and then wraps around back to the back gate of the town hall. But it, you, would, you would really, if you were gonna put another ball field in, you'd want it just because of the way the terrain is somewhere in this area back here. Now, the one thing is there would be a challenge in doing that. Uh, there's a pretty large um, drainage pathway ditch back in there. So we'd have to put, you know, like, uh, you know, we'd have to put some pretty good heavy size culverts in. There's a lot of water uh, that right. comes off of that uh, farm field up above and comes down towards this whole area. You know, you see Happiness House has done a lot as they're constructing right on the other side of this. Uh, so stormwater is, a, is an issue that's uh, getting serious attention with this uh, because there is a tremendous amount of water that comes off that field. And, and this whole area here is extremely low. If you actually take a ride back in the driveway that we've put in now, you see how we filled, but we need a lot more fill too. And, and there's more fill coming from some projects and everything, but you can really see now where the, the, this slopes this way and you can see where we've started to fill in this whole area. And obviously it's gonna take a while to get the field right and, and sit and, and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a big, it's a lot of earth movement going on back there. Mm -hmm. I've been watching it, yeah, it, it is. Well, that answers my question. I just, I just don't wanna see us boxed in you know, sure. in terms of, of future putting in fields for kids. Right. Can I, can I just cut in here that we're addressing a population that isn't currently addressed anywhere in this area. And um, I'm, I, for one, even though I'm old and willing to sacrifice a field for able-bodied children for a playground for children who don't have the opportunity to use what currently is available. Um, you know, honestly, th there are a lot of fields around and uh, kids can have the opportunity to play on a field, but there are many children around who do not have the opportunity to visit a playground like this. No, I, I agree. Um, and if you, in, in non-pandemic years, you can't get on a field in the town of Canandaigua anywhere, city, town, whatever. You have to you have to book them out way in advance. I don't I don't know who if anyone on here books those or not, but you can. So there's always that need, but I agree with you. We're providing something, but it sounds like this group's going to build them all over upstate New York, so they'll they'll have other opportunities around the state as as this will be their showcase. We'll see, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with you on that. So. <laughs> Any other questions um, on Outhouse? I know there were, I sent out some other pictures there, um, just some design things. Um, I think one was a picture of the, um, kind of the building that Doug was talking about. I can't remember what the other one was, but so everybody's kind of had a chance to see what that, you know, what the design's gonna look like, so. It's just gonna show you here, let's see. I have the pavilion, uh, Doug. Oh, you do? Yeah, do you want to show oh, that? Go ahead. Yep, Go that ahead. was it. <laughs> right. Do you want me to show the pavilion, Doug? Sure, yeah, go ahead. And then I'll show you guys that piece of property. I was just pulling up on course so I could show you that. Okay. This is the one you're talking about, right? The sketch of the pavilion? Uh, yes. 
Yeah. Yes. So yeah, this so side, this impressive. would be like <laughs> you're entering from the loop here, entering through here, and then the playground is on the back side. So this would be the bathrooms and the concession over to the right, and then the open air pavilion to the left. So the uh, the sides of the building, they're not. These are not really your traditional walls, especially as you're looking at the sketch on the left hand side. These are um, more like wind breaks is what they're looking to put in there. Obviously, we know that the wind comes from uh, primarily kind of racing down across the west northwest uh, through outhouse park in that general area. So uh, they're looking for just um, some wind break things so that uh, maybe it'll help break the wind up a little bit uh, or so that people can uh, Kind of get out of that or uh, get out of the weather a little bit if it's raining or or something or other like that. But uh, and then an area where there's plenty of room, obviously, for uh, wheelchairs and for people to get around and and move around there and everything. So you say it's going to be uh, solar powered. Uh, what does that entail? I mean, is that do we have expertise, I guess, in the town to, to maintain that and manage that type of power plant? Well, so the solar panels would actually, you know, it's kind of designed just like um, a lot of the other solar operations that we have in the town where you you solar into the grid, essentially. Oh. You know, the and then, yeah. You're just going to sell it back to the, to the power Correct. distribution. So that's Correct. it. To just offset the cost. Neutral. Right, to right. The, yeah. Let me uh, just go back and share this screen here with you. So this obviously is outhouse park here. Uh, this is what I was talking about. This is the area that we're talking about for the playground. And then the field is all kind of right in this area right here. This is that drainage. This is actually a blue line stream here uh, that I'm talking about. And then all of this is still all the town of Canada was. Um, and then obviously all of this being outhouse park. And then this is our area, our uh, water quality improvement project and, and the rest. Well, I'm, well, I got you right here on this. Let me just show you. Um, <clears throat> one of the requirements with the federal grant money that we're going after for the Auburn Trail is the Auburn Trail has to be 10 feet wide. And it's actually got to come all the way in and connect with the uh, city sidewalk system. One of the things that we're going to have to be doing is going back, uh, not necessarily right away, but we'll be going back this back portion of the trail about House Park, we're gonna to have to widen that out to 10 feet. Uh, we're in the process right now of doing the crossover right here. It's gonna hug right in here and then kind of come right around this way and then uh, loop out. And then this will be the connection right up here, right at the city line is where the connection will cross you because technically we're crossing North Street. We're not crossing County Road 30 uh, to get to the other side here. Uh, this is our water quality improvement project. The burn uh, comes up along here and then our, our trail will come on all up here and then we'll stay on the outside. We'll cross over onto the airport property, but stay on the outside of their fence. Uh, we have uh, pretty much most everything in place for all that. We're finishing up the engineering there and then we'll continue on uh, the pathway up to Brickyard Road. We've got uh, MRB working with us up to Thomas Road and uh, the connection point up to Thomas Road. And then we had hired Fisher Associates from Thomas Road north to the town of Farmington. Um, Fisher Associates did all the work with the town of Farmington for the Auburn Trail, and they've been very successful at getting federal grant money. It's a very complex grant program. You would not believe the hoops that you have to jump through. It's just incredible. Uh, but they've been very successful in helping Farmington navigate that and get that portion of the Auburn Trail. Um, so what we did is we had, um, and I think I shared this with maybe at a meeting with you even earlier this year, Fisher Associates had been looking at a variety of different options, west side, east side of Brickyard Road. Uh, they've come back. We're going to be presenting here relatively quickly. Uh, COVID has slowed us down, but staying on the east side, of Brickyard Road to Thomas Road and then crossing over right here. There's actually, keep in mind, Thomas Road is a dead end road right here. There's a stop sign here already. Crossing right here uh, and then coming over uh, on this side of Brickyard Road to connect with the rest of the, uh, uh, on down the, the, where we would go down to the town's property down and then cross over to Outhouse Park. We take advantage of uh, the existing pathway that's here in front of the townhomes. Again, one of the things that we're going to have to work with the landowner there is it has to be 10 feet wide. It's only eight feet wide currently. So we've got to go back and make some adjustments there. 
continuing up uh, Brickyard Road uh, on this side, on the east side of Brickyard Road, um, up across. And we've been talking with um, combination. I tell you, you, you really get into some interesting different things here. But um, of course, this is some of our protected farmland for our PDR program. So that means the Finger Lakes Land Trust, New York State Department of Ag and Markets, uh, as well as the property owners are involved in this. Uh, so we've carefully crafted, we'll be able to stay in the right of way uh, so that we're not interfering with any of the farmland coming up into this area. And then coming on up here to um, Brickyard Road and, and uh, getting us to Purdy Road now. <clears throat> then we get into a whole, <laughs> a, a whole variety of different things. And to make a very long story short for you guys, we've been working on this for quite some time now. The water tank, and I think some of you may know this, I know Jared knows this, this water tank right here has to be replaced. Uh, this water tank, uh, the Canandaigua Farmington Water District serves the whole northern portion of the town of Canandaigua. This water tank uh, is required to be replaced by the New York State Department of Health. So this water tank is going to be replaced. There's gonna be a new water line that comes out. And uh, the way that they had to do the water line hydraulically is it actually crosses back and forth across the road. But why that's important is once we get up to this point up here, <clears throat> the water line comes in and it's actually gonna cross through here and then run up here basically to Town Line Road. Um, in order to get this easement, we had to do a variety of different things for that water line to cross this piece of property. And we have future plans and we're, we're still working out all the specifics, but we have future plans to actually construct a road that will actually connect Brickyard Purdy Road, uh, tie in Mobile Road here to Town Line Road, coming in out just about in this area with the trail adjacent to it. This property owner has actually been working up with us for quite some time now, and they've purchased three of these homes here so that we can actually put the road uh, right through this area. And then there'll be a special district so that the, uh, the taxpayers, the full taxpayers of the town of Canandaigua aren't saddled with the cost of, of the construction of that. And then the developer uh, will come in, you know, a future developer at a point in time, I'm sure would come through and develop this. That will get us all the way up here, the Auburn Trail connecting to Outhouse Park right here at Town Line Road. And as you may or may not know, uh, along this, the sidewalk system here, uh, right out here, this is technically the Auburn Trail that comes down here and wraps down in the town of Farmington. And then uh, it gets all the way down to here and it's now actually in place and connecting right there. Additionally, we'll be doing a full reconstruction of Town Line Road, it started already. Uh, this water line that I was referencing, that's a big driver for the full reconstruction of Town Line Road, as well as the road itself has to be a complete reconstruction. They've been working on it all summer long. They've got it open uh, from 332 all the way back to New Michigan right now, but there's more work to come. So there's a, there's a lot of moving pieces um, in, in this whole area, but I can tell you it's all headed in a positive direction. It's, it's coming together. Uh, and that would, uh, a big piece of this though, is going to be contingent this trail on us getting that federal grant money uh, to come down here to Thomas Road because the anticipated cost from Thomas Road up to Town Line Road um, it, with the crossing the wetlands there and the, the bridging that we'll have to do with the, um, the uh, Gambian baskets and then the, the stone that has to be put on top of that, uh, we're in excess of $3 million for the construction of that piece of the Auburn Trail. So um, a lot of, a lot of cool things happening and coming together, but uh, obviously still a lot of work to do. So, all right, Mark, what else you want to talk about? Uh, just looking at my list here. Uh, um, just st again, still at Outhouse Park. You mentioned um, th there is going to be some work, some new playground equipment coming in. So at, at the, for the, play, the existing playground. Yeah, so we work. have, yeah, let me share that screen just again, just so I can show you, cause this is, this kind of shows this. Um, you can see this is, uh, this is an older map of the playground here, but you can see the playground here at Outhouse Park, right? Everybody can see this? Yes. Okay. All right, so this is the pirate ship here. And this is the swing set right here. And of course, we've just re-mulched. We have all new fresh mulch and everything there. And it actually looks really nice. 
Um, the town, we switched our insurance carrier uh, two years ago and um, uh, Houston Casualty Corporation, and they've actually been really great to work with. And one of the things that they were really focused on is um, playground safety. And uh, we actually now have on staff uh, our, our um, one of our code enforcement officers, uh, Chris Jensen. We asked him to go through the process to become a certified playground inspector. And we're also, uh, Troy is also working on that. But one of the things that has come up uh, and the insurance carrier called it out immediately is this swing set. You see how it's set back here and it was I, just whatever way it was installed. It doesn't have enough mulch around it and we need to extend. The mulch has to be twice as far behind the swing set is the chain is long on a swing set according to the national safety standards for playgrounds. So we've got to extend this mulch area um, by a good little piece uh, back back in through here. The other thing that had come up uh, in repeated requests and comments that we had heard from different folks is uh, maybe an additional uh, feature at the playground. So we've looked and uh, we've actually, I think, found now, um, and we we're actually planning to do it in 2020, but COVID struck, a, um, another pirate ship that offers some different um, play, I guess is how you would say it, some different things uh, with the ship, keeping with the overall theme of the pirate ship playground that obviously the younger kids absolutely love. And uh, we'd be able to put that in about where the cursor is here and also take care of that mulch situation. Uh, so we do have that in the 21 budget as, um, as a placeholder for us to move forward with that. So. And by the way, when we, when we talk about our uh, playgrounds, we're doing monthly uh, inspections now of all of our playgrounds uh, from that, um, make sure that they meet the, uh, the requirements for the National uh, Safety Play Institute. Uh, we found even things like, for instance, bolts that are turned the wrong way and have to be taken out and turned the other way and a variety of different things, but we're, we're working on all that. So. And then Doug, some of the other things we talked about there when we met the other day, um, still continuing on with, with work, possible work taking place at the uplands at Onanda with uh, um, cabin improvements and, and just trying to figure out kind of the best option of, of what to do to, to, to stay on a, a continuous improvement plan up at, at Onanda with, with making those cabins more user-friendly and, and some things like that. Um, yeah, let me, I'm just moving my map because it slows down when I'm sharing it. Let me just highlight a couple of things and I'm going to show you a couple of things here about Onanda and I'll reshare my screen here in just a second. Um, there's, there's just so many neat things happening. Honestly, I, I was in a meeting earlier and I said, you know, all the things, all the really cool things that we have going on for Parks and Rec, I mean, 2021, um, it, 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 with these things shaping up, I mean, it's going to be an incredible year and we're really talking about charting the course for a uh, just a fantastic uh, future for the Parks and Rec uh, in the town of Canandaigua. I'm going to share, reshare my screen here so I can show you a couple of different things. So <clears throat> um, first, let's start on Lakeside. Lakeside Onanda, obviously, you know that uh, the the governor signed the legislation to transfer the lakeside of Onanda to, from the DEC to the town of Canandaigua. Uh, we kind of penciled out an agreement with the DEC and what would be required with that. Um, there's some, um, the legislation didn't actually do the transfer. The legislation authorized the commissioner to transfer. And so we've got to finish the pieces associated with that and, and, and actually making that transfer. Um, there's some components associated with that agreement. There's some easements that we have to record. Um, one of the things that we talked about is the promotion of a fishing program, not only at uh, Onanda, uh, that was the original purchase for Onanda was the fisheries program actually purchased Onanda, the New York State DEC's fishery program uh, back in 1990. And so, uh, you know, those, those are some of the things and there's a whole list of different things associated with that transfer. Um, let me just zoom in here for a quick second because it helps me remember some of the things. There's just so many things going on. Um, one of the things that we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to have to put a new roof on Crouch Hall in 21. 
Uh, we've got a leak there. We have a temporary patch, but we're looking to do that. Uh, just uh, you, you may or may not know, you may have seen we're continuing to work on the uh, what was the old Nature Nuts building and really opening up the interior of that for a recreation area for people using the park. Uh, things like ping pong tables and those sorts of things, and it just has incredible, fantastic views on the inside of that. Uh, a lot of our cabins actually are in, uh, you know, decent shape. They're obviously they're a rustic, um, a rustic vibe uh, on the lakeside for sure, for sure, absolutely. Um, there's some tree work that we need to do in trimming up some trees. Our tree committee has went through all of our parks. Uh, there are some trees that need to be trimmed. There's no trees here. Uh, that need to come down. Um, there is obviously we've got had a situation this year with the gypsy moth. Uh, we do have um, a tree expert. Uh, by the way, the tree committee, Sarah didn't mention it, but there are three certified arborists on our tree committee. Uh, so there, there really are a wealth of knowledge and information and in helping us out. Um, but uh, we actually have a gentleman who's already doing some work that we had hired on a uh, on a New York State DEC grant that we had received for the Hemlock Woolly Adelgid. And uh, he also does do um, some stuff relative to the gypsy moth. So we're looking at some different quotes and those types of things right now. Uh, we are being encouraged to get out ahead of it and uh, pre-treat next year so that uh, the trees survived basically this year in the infestation, but they may not be able to say survive a second year if we get hit again next year. So uh, they're encouraging some pre-treatment uh, for some of the, especially some of those large spruces that are there. Um, the gully itself uh, behind here, obviously we've, we're continuously, I hear from some of these residents with some concerns about the gully. There is some, some things that just in terms of cleanup that'll need to be done. Uh, that we'll, we'll have to take into account. And uh, we also know that, um, that, I don't know if I mentioned to you or not, one of the things we had is we did a survey. Uh, there was no document, there was no place where all of the water lines and everything was documented in terms of where everything was for Onanda. So uh, that was actually something that we accomplished uh, in 2020, uh, 2019 into 2020. We were able to, utilizing the knowledge of folks like Jeff Winter, who's been there and worked on a lot of stuff, plus the, the piecing different things together. We were actually able to get real surveys, documented surveys of where everything is and what everything is, lakeside and uplands. And obviously we had to have the property surveyed as we get towards a title transfer anyway on the lakeside um, for the real estate closing. There is a old uh, waste oil tank here in the ground that we're gonna need to uh, address. And uh, interestingly enough, I don't know if, if you all know, I didn't know until we did the survey and started digging into it, there's a fire hydrant. It's about right in that area. I don't know if you've ever seen it there. And I have been asked before, what's the purpose of the fire hydrant there? We know there's no municipal water there. Well, there's actually a, um, there's a, a basically a dry well uh, underground there. And there's the shale that's allowing water to get into that. And uh, the Cheshire Fire Department and the various fire departments over the years have been able to pull water from the lake at that fire hydrant. Uh, so that's the purpose of the fire hydrant there to be able to refill a tanker. Um, and it seems to work very well. We've done work on the, the platforms. Um, it was actually turned out to be a, a good permanent fix. We believe now we were having some issues with the fishing platform. So that's uh, that's all taken care of there. All right, have I bored you yet on the lakeside? I haven't even got to the rest of it yet. <clears throat> um, on the uplands, we do have again, uh, we have uh, Latani cabin. There's a there's Latani cabin in particular is a cabin, and I know I've talked to you about before. Uh, it really needs to be replaced. Uh, it either needed a complete overhaul or it needed to be replaced. And uh, by the time we actually have received quotes and everything, it would actually be um, more cost efficient to actually just replace it. So we've looked at a variety of pre-manufactured cabins. You see them in a lot of different campgrounds and those types of things. And um, we've got um, some quotes that we're looking at in replacing um, specifically Latani. And then we could have a plan for replacing some of the future cabins as we go. Maybe reusing those cabins, maybe not. I thought, honestly, I thought I had a deal worked out for a donation of five cabins last week. And uh, unfortunately, it fell through at the last minute. But um, I'm still hopeful that maybe we can get something like that for some of these organizations. We're constantly looking at, at different uh, opportunities associated with that. 
the one thing that we're still missing is kind of like a future build out plan of the uplands that's something that we're going to have to uh to look at and connection points obviously and and um for the safety aspect as well as incorporating things obviously like the trails and and a variety of everything else i want to jump up here a little bit more the, when we did the survey, by the way, when we did the complete survey of Onanda and we, we included everything, water lines, et cetera, everything, one of the things that we discovered is the trail over on this side actually crosses over onto the neighboring property. So that is something that we're going to have to uh, work there also on. Um, the other thing that's happening is this landowner here, I'm working with this landowner now, uh, they have a lot of concerns. There's, they say there's a lot of folks coming out of the park and crossing over onto their private property their private property being this parcel here. Let me just zoom out so you can see it. Um, that is a uh, 70 acre parcel, uh, odd shape, but 70 acres there. So they're experiencing a, a traffic onto their private property, people trespassing. So um, I'm hoping that we'll be able to work something out uh, with them. The other thing that we have going on here, this is, uh, and I know Karen had, um, uh, made some comments and, and rightly so in terms of the development office had referred a, a project over in terms of this property here on Seneca Point Road. Um, I was with the planning board till about nine o'clock last night. We were looking at this this uh, sketch plan. The, the owner of this land is proposing to create a religious retreat uh, with the construction of cabins uh, within the five lot subdivision of this parcel through a conservation subdivision. Um, in turn, basically what they're looking to provide to the town of Canandaigua is uh, conservation protection of some of the, the gully, uh, some of the woodlands, as well as the agriculture area. There's about plus or minus 17 acres of agriculture here. Um, one of the things that we've got to figure out, they would like to have cabins and the ability for people to obviously walk the gully, uh, walk the trail on down to Onanda. Um, this landowner uh, I've, I've had uh, near daily communication with, you know, this is the same landowner that had the concern about the trespassing uh, down closer on, you know, this, this other point. Um, so I'm talking to this landowner about a variety of different things and what it might look like if there was some sort of trail access, whether it's across here or whether it's going along the edge of their property and across, but uh, we're having those conversations. We're having those conversations now. So what's the point of all of that? Well, keep in mind, here's McJanet Park. So that almost links Onanda Park to McJanet Park. We're right here. And then, oh, by the way, this parcel that I have highlighted, this is our joint project with Finger Lakes Land Trust called the Canandaigua Vista Project that we intentionally included this spur here. Finger Lakes Land Trust owns this little spur here. It gets us all the way down here to, to Route 21. So if I zoom out here for a second, you see there actually literally, you can really see where there's a connection point that could shape up and potentially exist all the way from Onanda, all the way up through McJanet Park, all the way up here to the Vista Project. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a neat, exciting opportunity. The Vista Project, you'll hear and see the trails are there. Uh, they're, they're doing some additional work on the trails. There's just some um, gorgeous, gorgeous scenery. They haven't opened it to the public yet. Uh, they really want to uh, complete a couple of things before they open it to the public, including they want to um, have a parking area that they're planning to construct off of Jones Road. There'll be a plane coming before long. Uh, they've hired an engineering firm out of uh, Tompkins County to actually design the um, do all the engineering work and representing them, including that parking area, the connection points to the trails. They also want to clearly mark the boundaries of the property to try to prevent people from uh, walking off of that property onto some other private properties. And, oh, but wait, there's more. They're looking already to expand that parcel. Uh, basically, what uh, my, my recent conversation just last week with Andy Zepp was, was that they um, <clears throat> have seen a huge increase, obviously, this year with COVID. We've seen it with Miller Park. Miller Park is a classic example of people just wanting to get outside, walk their dogs, go for a walk, enjoy fresh air. Um, they believe that trend is going to continue, and uh, they are looking to partner with some of the neighboring landowners to expand um, the Finger Lakes Vista project. And uh, the Finger Lakes Vista project, I don't know if you've seen any of the photos, but it has incredible views of the lake and, and the entire uh, valley uh, from up at the top of the Vista project. So 
All right, I've been talking a lot. Let me let you guys ask questions or make comments or whatever the case is. So. Doug, I'm confused about that triangular piece you just had your cursor on there. Uh, mm -hmm. So are they are they asking for there to be a town trail um, connecting? Not the tri not the triangle, the large piece. The not McJanet, the big yeah, that piece. Are they asking for there to be a town trail along the in their religious retreat, or are they asking for? Uh, I, I'm confused as to how that would. Uh, be part of this plan if it's a religious retreat. So I didn't quite catch that. Sure. So what they would, in order to do the five lot subdivision that they are requesting to do, they cannot do that without what's called a conservation subdivision with the planning yep, board approving a conservation subdivision. In order for there to be a conservation subdivision, there has to be a preservation of certain natural resources. And they're looking to basically cooperate with the town in providing access. So what they've talked about is, again, one of the natural resources being agriculture. You could, we could do a conservation uh, easement for agriculture protection in this area for this farmland. This is still actively farmed. There's this area here, which is uh, woodland, um, variety of different species of trees. They would be willing to do a conservation easement on that. Uh, as well as the gully or separate from the gully, perhaps there's a separate conservation easement that's on the gully that um, includes uh, pedestrian access, includes trail, uh, because there's an existing trail that already goes through there. Uh, I think it honestly started out or probably is really primarily existed as a deer trail, a wildlife trail. Uh, but it's there. And he says that, uh, and there's actually a couple of folks, including the representative from uh, Finger Lakes Land Trust has walked that trail and it is walkable uh, all the way down to the edge of the property. And they've actually walked it all the way down to Ananda. And when I first had my first conversation with the landowner, I said, you know, if, if you've walked down to Ananda, you've trespassed across private property. And they didn't realize that, but, um, but yeah, so, so there would be uh, potentially three uh, conservation easements, I guess, is how I would envision if that were to move forward uh, to the town of Canandaigua with one including pedestrian access uh, for the gully area where the trail is. Then obviously the next point was how do you connect to McJanet Park? You know, obviously, you know, we'd have to work with with someone. The the landowners here, I'll share with you here, I, I have, like I said, I've been having some great conversations even again today with the landowners here. Um, they had a lot of reservations. They had heard some horror stories uh, from um, the 2008, 9, 10, 11 timeframe where uh, they believe that the town of Canandaigua was going to come in and take their property by eminent domain to expand the park and uh, make uh, connections for the trails. Um, they were quite, uh, they've shared with me some concern over the years when different trail plants have come out and showed a connection across their property. And so um, they, um, in a prior owner, I guess had said that the town was very difficult to deal with. So uh, they had a lot of concern, but, you know, I assured them that we were not looking to take their property by eminent domain or anything at all like that. But if there was an opportunity to work together, that I'd like to at least explore those options and those considerations. And so I think that uh, they were relieved to hear that and they I think are coming at it with a little bit more open mind now. And I think one of the important things for us to realize too is that when we can't lose sight of the fact that the, the, the planning board and everybody else, they do have these pictures in mind when they're, you know, when they're looking at these types of things these connections that help the trails aren't lost on them either. So I, I think that's, you know, good knowing that, that they've also got that as a, as a goal as well to look at these types of connections. Well, and truthfully, Chairman, that's why it's critical that we have things like the Parks and Rec Master Plan, because we talk about those types of needs and those types of, of um, things that the future than what we'd like to see and then the you know development office and the planning board the environmental conservation board all the different groups that looks at these look at these types of things they constantly have that in mind here's a plan that's been adopted by the town board that says hey this is what we'd kind of like to see for the future so they do keep those things in mind
Any questions? Anyone have any other questions or? Such a quiet group. Maybe it's because Randy's not here. Mm -hmm. So there's um, there's just so many cool things going on. There really are. It's it's a neat time. And and really the only the only other big thing that we had on our agenda was to start looking at the the parks code review. I did send that out yesterday. Um, I don't know. There were seven or eight pages there. I'm not sure how much of a chance anybody had to to look through that. But I think that. The big thing to keep in mind is we're kind of looking for a general overview of thoughts on, on some of those changes. Um, and then really it'll get turned over to the ordin ordinance committee to, to, you know, do all the wordsmithing and to do all that work with the, um, you know, the language of the code. Um, yeah, and then the other thing I just, uh, if I just could put a, a very general, and this is going to be an intentionally vague comment, you guys, but um, obviously we have heard loud and clear over the years, uh, public access to Canandaigua Lake, and uh, that was referenced in the Parks and Rec Master Plan, as well as in the town's comprehensive plan, and, uh, you know, we're always actively looking for different opportunities, and hopefully we'll have some um, different things that we can talk about here in the near future. There's just a lot of uh, moving pieces going on right now. We do have a public hearing on December 21st at the town board meeting uh, relative that's been announced relative to a piece of property uh, that um, actually is the RSM property. Um, and if you're not familiar with that, let me, you know, here I am. Sorry, Mark, let me share my screen one more time here. Um, but, um, and this isn't, uh, I'm just going to use Encore because I've got it up here, but there's a, there's a better version that I can email out to you guys. But um, uh, the possibility uh, exists, this, this parcel here is available, this parcel, which would cross the road, this parcel, and not this entire piece, but um, connection point up here to this parcel, this parcel being the homeowners of Lakewood Meadows uh, owns this parcel here. And then obviously that gets you to the sidewalk system inside of Lakewood Meadows. So again, uh, when you're talking about connectivity, uh, this parcel, this, forget this, these squiggly lines here for me for a second, just pretend that there's a straight line up here. Um, if we were to move forward with something like this, this gets you a connection from County Road 16 out to Middle Cheshire Road. Uh, with a, uh, the sidewalk system through Lakewood Meadows, obviously still a lot of conversations to take place. Um, a trail uh, down along this portion uh, with the parking lot uh, somewhere in this general vicinity, and then uh, 485 feet of lake frontage. At 485 feet of lake frontage, I believe that may be the single largest parcel on the lake uh, linear foot that's left that hasn't been subdivided up over the years. Um, the, there was another parcel that Cook property. Um, I was able to have some conversations with the Cooks, but uh, that is under contract. It actually may have already changed hands now, but uh, uh, that uh, had already been sold. So um, a lot still on this, um, you know, we do have a public hearing coming up on this and we're looking for comments and input and we'll, I'm sure have a lot more to talk about in the months ahead relative to to this and whether or not to move forward with something like this but uh the the seller is cooperating with us through what we call a uh, option agreement uh where the town could decide to exercise the option if it chose to um, there's also the dec is interested in possibly protecting a portion of this due to source water protection this isasn't very far from the city of canada was inlet where the water comes from so uh, a lot of different things kind of in the works here with that. So. Doug, have you um, emailed the HOA from Lakewood Meadows and the other various HOAs about that public hearing? Um, we have not gotten into that level of detail yet. No, no. I mean, you're you're welcome to uh, to let them know, but we truthfully, this is more at this point. We're still so early on. We'll need additional public hearings and talk to residents and and the community if if we move with something like this this uh, there is no action on the agenda by the way for this there will be no action okay. this is more of just discussion okay it might be um could you just 
pop me a quick email indicating what's happening and then I'll forward it on and it, just for any interested people in the HOA. Sure. I've um, got I a think, better map that shows this. I'll forward that to you on the line with a, okay. with a quick note. So I think that um, I can't imagine, we're a very trail oriented community. I can't imagine that they would want that access. I think there would be a lot of question about how it would affect our trail system, um, it, which obviously we've had a lot of leeway to create kind of whatever we wanted, um, not up to code. <laughs> so I think that might be it. The only concern I can, well, a million concerns will come up, but I can see that being a relatively significant concern about uh, town traffic on the trails, et cetera, and so forth. So. comments questions on that but i'd love a direct route to oxana's house that'd be great <laughs> <laughs> so did, did anyone have any comments just initial thoughts on on some of the ideas or anything that jumped out from the the um suggested code revisions probably the the biggest thing really was was taking out things that don't exist anymore and really the big ad was was looking at a way to work some type of um, controlled alcohol use into the parks really was the only big addition to that. So I don't know if anybody had a chance to look through any of the edits that were made or anything with that. I did not get a chance to look at it, but I will. So that, that's something here is kind of, we had through January, you know, into February. And, and I, I think that's something that we can, if we can start firming that up, I know that takes Doug a few different town board meetings to get a resolution and then a resolution for a resolution and everything to change code so well we don't we don't want to rush this well, let's take our time and and really make sure that everybody's comfortable with it and then obviously we'll have the ordinance committee and they'll they'll go through it and but uh there you know there are a lot of uh different things in there the, a lot of the 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 one thing i would say is once you start looking at it and thinking about it <clears throat> The alcohol section is very intentional, the way that that was put in, uh, the way that some other municipalities handle that, and that is associated only with facility rentals. So that would prohibit someone who is, you know, renting a cabin and going and getting a six pack and taking it down to Ananda. This would be more for, uh, I'm renting Gorham Lodge for a wedding or for a wine tasting or whatever the case. Um, and there would be a special permit uh, associated with that facility rental, basically. Um, our insurance carrier, I've talked with them at length about that uh, and legal to make sure that we're covered and we are uh, with regard to that and everything. And we'll get something, you know, once we get a, a little bit further along in the draft language and how it looks and everything, we'll get official comments from them in writing and everything. But it's, it's with facility rental only. So. So people playing bocce on the bocce courts wouldn't be able to bring alcoholic beverages there. No. So they no, do, that, yeah. do that now, but we wouldn't officially be able to let them do that. Correct. Any other other things that we didn't discuss or that that pretty much covers everything, Doug, that I had on my list from, from our meeting the other day. And I, I said Good, we were going to let more. you out of here early, but it, it didn't seem like we got you out of here very early. It's so. all good. It's an exciting time, honestly. I'm super excited for Parks and Rec and all the things that are coming. It's it's really cool. It really is. It, it, and I know, I know on the agenda, I had noted something about a review of the fee schedule, but that's something that, that Sam has been talking to Gene about and and uh, really not a, not it seems like a big thing, but maybe a few little tweaks just to to resolve a few issues issues with scheduling some things or reserving some things but you know that's something maybe that can come up you know a little bit later but for right now i think we're in pretty good shape so and that really covers everything on the agenda and, and then some so hi lily she's on mute Nope. Sorry. Hey guys, I'm here. My microphone wasn't working. <laughs> I was trying to tap on it. It wasn't, but hey, uh, <laughs> I've been here. 
So any anything else? Anybody want to add anything? We've got a spot for other on our agenda and. Mark, do you guys have a meeting schedule set for 2021? Well, you guys I had put on the agenda that tentatively we were we had our January 27th meeting in the past. Okay. We've used that meeting as kind of our organizational meeting okay. to set the for the rest of the year. Okay. So, just um, wanted to check. And, and if that works with everybody, that you know, we we'd go with the same kind of the same schedule and then discuss it at our our January 27th meeting would be the next Parks and Rec meeting. So. Everybody good with that? The 27th, again, it'd be 6 p.m. Um, I'm assuming we're gonna stay with, with Zoom for a while that, that the next uh, month and a half probably isn't gonna help us a I, whole lot, so. I, I agree, yeah, I'm, I'm, I am set with it. So anything else or are we good to, to call it a night and, and uh, Travel on. We're good. Thanks for all the hard work from you people that live at the town of uh, Canada offices, Doug and, and everybody. It's yes, uh, it, it is an exciting time. I, I know that uh, sometimes that stuff goes unnoticed and, and it isn't until stuff shows up. I, I think our parks, I drive by outhouse all the time, even on a cold winter day, there's people playing on that pirate ship. It's, uh, it's just a good feeling. And I think when we get that adaptive playground in, I think it's gonna, it'll be bring big things. Uh, uh, great recognition to you, to you guys that worked so hard on it. So thank you. Uh, I have a question for Doug, please. Um, the, Too late, the, Darren. We were already done. No, I'm done. This is this is outside <laughs> of the parks. I'm but it's, it's about this. It's about a park. Camp the Onanda Park. The gate is always shut to <clears throat> the road to the lake. Isn't there a time of the year when you open that up for old people like me so we can drive down there and sit? Uh, it should be open now. I believe it's November 15th is when it opens. Oh, well, I, I think okay, actually I, was, I checked yeah, last week. Yeah. Yeah. That's so great. if it's not, it'll be open soon. But yes, I think it's November 15th. Yeah. Thank you. So technically there's a there's a section of the town code and that's actually one of the things that um, I'm glad you asked that question. When you guys look at the code and the proposed revisions, that's actually one of the things that um, I actually, as, as we were kind of working through some red line versions, Samantha, myself, and then we had talked with Mark. Right now, what the town code says, and the agreement with the DEC says that um, the only time that basically that the you can launch a uh, motorized watercraft is when the north end of the lake is frozen. But obviously, we don't use for the recreational programs to the same extent from basically the months of November, December, January, February, or even March. You know, could we allow? more of those fishing type non or motorized vessels to be launched. So I think the way, if I remember off the top of my head, the way I wrote it is uh, that it, you'd have the ability to launch uh, a watercraft there as long as, a, you know, like a fishing vessel, that sort of thing, not some leisure boat. I don't know if somebody would do that in December or not, but um, as long as, you know, the conditions warranted, that sort of thing. So that's something for you guys to talk about and think about there and everything. So. I saw a really cool site at Onanda about two weeks ago. I was down there for a real quick meeting. And uh, while I was there, the DEC fisheries came in with two great big, huge trucks. And they were, um, uh, what's it called? They're, they were actually releasing stocking. fish uh, yeah, stocking. in stocking. And uh, what they said is uh, they had had some issues this year and some of the fish farms um, it did really, really well. And there were some issues with some of the other places where they traditionally take them uh, with water levels being too low and they weren't able to release them. So they brought them all to Ananda instead. So uh, the lake should be well stocked. <laughs> Great. Okay, Doug and Sam, thank you both for, for spending. I mean, heck, here we are going on an hour and a half. So I, I really appreciate the time. I, I think it's, it, it's great really to get your perspective and, and I can repeat what, you know, what I've heard from you over a month's time, but, but, you know, to hear it from both of you, I think it's, it's valuable to the committee and helpful. So thank you. 
and we're, we're happy to do it. Sam and I enjoy, I'm going to speak for Sam there a second. We really do enjoy parks. It's, it's a fun thing. It's, uh, there's so many of the other technical things that we're, we do on a given day, but uh, it's always a smile to be able to work on park stuff and it's a lot of fun. Okay, well, thanks. I'm going to click the leave button and, and have, have, we'll make have it a great holiday, fun. everybody. Thanks, everybody. Happy holidays. Stay, stay, stay safe. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas, everybody. Right. See you. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Happy holidays.